With the new DJI FPV quad looking imminent, there's a few things that you need to know before you buy. Let's discuss. Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On, and if you enjoy this kind of content, then smash that subscribe button because we'll be doing a giveaway very soon. In the meantime, Droning On started reviewing FPV quads. Years ago, when I first commenced this channel, I got sent tons of products and I flew, reviewed, fixed and repaired a lot of FPV quads and I loved it. But then the market shifted towards GPS drones and so did my interest. And you will find with FPV and GPS drones, you often flitter between the two when you get bored of one or the other. But DJI's latest offering, which we just leaked earlier this week, is certainly going to get a lot of people excited. I actually believe that this could be DJI's best selling product for the last few years if they get it right. A lot of you out there are brand new to FPV and that's why for this product to be a success, there's some things that you really need to think about before you consider getting into the world of FPV. Let's discuss them now. Now the first big one is cost and at this time we don't know what it's going to cost and if you do see any figures out there it's pure guesswork. Here's a bit of guesswork from me. I think it's going to be about a thousand dollars based on the cost of the existing DJI digital FPV system plus bundling it with a proprietary built quad. It's just not going to be cheap. Now for those of you who've never flown FPV before you may not love this. You might not be very good at it. You might not be able to master it and so spending a thousand dollars on something that you're not going to enjoy flying or can't fly is throwing money away. Most people when they enter FPV buy a cheap quad and a cheap controller and that way you get a feel for it and you can work out whether or not you enjoy it or not. As an example, quads like this one here cost about $150. All you need to do is add a battery and a controller to it and you can get flying. And I'll put links in the video description of some even cheaper sets that you can use to just work out whether or not this part of the hobby is for you or not. Cost of repairs. Now, if you own any drone of any type, you may at some point in that time have had to repair it, and you'll know that it's generally not cheap. DJI are very good at making drones that are almost uncrashable, but there's always somebody out there in the community that manages to smash it up and having a big repair bill at the end of it. With FPV drones, you will crash because the main difference is you're not relying on GPS all the time. You're not relying on stabilization to keep you up in the air and stop you from hitting a tree when you're trying to fly through that gap. Crashing is part of the learning process and when you're learning to fly FPV, when you do crash, you generally remember why and you try and avoid doing that ever again. It also makes you fly much more carefully on that next flight, especially after you've spent a few hundred dollars repairing it. Also remember that FPV quads fly much quicker than your average regular GPS drone and so you will take more risks and taking evasive action, you'll have far less time to do it. So with a quad like this one, nothing's proprietary. Every single component on here, the antenna, the blades, the motors, the camera, even the flight controller, I can pick up another one for about $20. The DJI quad is going to be proprietary. Every aspect of it from the airframe to the motors to the camera to the speed controllers including of course the arms which also can be victim when you crash an FPV quad are all made by DJI. You can't buy them anywhere else and therefore you can only get those spares from DJI. But if you think about the camera that we've seen so far on the leaks of the DJI FPV quad it's highly likely that that unit alone is going to be over a hundred dollars especially as it has a gimbal or what appears to be a gimbal attached to it. With FPV crashing is unfortunately inevitable and even if this thing has obstacle avoidance it's highly unlikely that that obstacle avoidance will stop you hitting a tree if you're flying at the kind of speeds that you expect an FPV quad to be flying at. With an FPV quad you're not expecting to just float gently around the sky looking at the pretty sunsets. You're zooming around flying through gaps that most people wouldn't be able to fly through normally. So therefore on that basis the performance of this quad has to be good if it's going to have mass market appeal. There is of course always the beginner to FPV who wants something very basic but when you do start getting into FPV you very very quickly want more. And that's why most FPV pilots have multiple quads. These are just the few I've got. And before I moved to Sweden, I sold 15 that I hadn't flown for a while. That's because naturally your skill progresses 
and therefore your expectations for FPV also progress. You want to fly faster, sharper, and better. So this new FPV quad from DJI has to have selectable levels of performance. It has to have a beginner mode which stabilizes and doesn't let you fly particularly quickly. It then needs an intermediate, and of course, if they really want this to appeal to FPV operators who've been flying for a while, then it needs to have a pro mode which lets them fly this new FPV quad in the same way that they fly a regular FPV quad that they're already flying like this one. If they get the bottom or the top of this market wrong, then this quad will not appeal to either. The other consideration is that they seem to be stacking so much technology into this quad. Look how chunky it is. Look how thick those arms are and how big the body is. It's carrying a lot of additional supplementary kit here that most professionals and even intermediate FPV operators won't want. My worry is this thing might be so heavy that it actually doesn't really perform very well. We've seen speculative speeds of 150 kilometers per hour, but that's pure guesswork. We just don't know at the moment what this thing might or might not be capable of. Kind of related to the first one about crashing, you will crash this quad. And when you do, you're going to need spare parts. And you don't want to be waiting a month for those spare parts because in that month, you're not flying. Most FPVers have multiple quads. So when I crash one and it's in repair, I've got another one to fly. But if this thing does cost a thousand dollars, or let's say without the controller and the headset system, let's say it costs $600, that's still a lot of money to have a few sat on the bench. The other challenge is if you fly DJI kit, you'll know that spares are not easy to find. And in fact, for the Mavic Air 2, I had to wait a month for the replacement camera and gimbal after I replaced it recently. Also, even arms take a long time to arrive arrive and the other challenge of course is that it's all proprietary. Replacing the gimbal and the camera can lead to it need to being reprogrammed to align it with the rest of the drone's technology. Even replacing one of the arms on a DJI drone also can need reprogramming. So let's just hope that spares are readily accessible and when you need them they're there quickly. The other side of course is the cost of these spares as we've already covered that could be quite significant. And finally, the big one is support. I keep saying the word crash, and somebody comment below please and count how many times I've said it during this video. But trust me, in FPV, it's all about the crash, repair, fly. It's a cycle you go through, and during that you learn a lot, because you learn about how the inner workings of an FPV quad are actually put together, and that's invaluable when you do need to repair it. However, when you do crash and you feel it's not your fault, you're going to want to raise a repair ticket with DJI, and there might lie an issue. Already people have challenges with DJI support when they feel that they weren't responsible for their GPS drone crashing, when actually DJI say that you were. Now, when you're flying a GPS drone, you're generally at the mercy of all of the autonomy of that drone, which is keeping it in the air and keeping it safe. However, with an FPV quad, you generally have far less autonomy, and therefore, if you do crash, it's almost always your fault. But are we going to see stories of tricky support cycles with DJI, with consumers claiming it wasn't my fault, when DJI are saying, yes, it was? Is this going to lead to weeks of dispute from various new entrants to the FPV market who don't really know how to fly FPV yet, just getting it horribly wrong and feeling like it wasn't their fault and raising support tickets unfairly against DJI? Support is going to be key here, and that's why DJI need to ensure that if this drone is targeted at beginners, it's got enough fail-safe and safety mechanisms to stop people from crashing as much as they possibly can, or at least to capture data to show the user where they went wrong. Whatever happens, I am seriously excited about DJI entering this market properly because their digital system has been a game changer for the market, and I really do mean that genuinely. Adding a quad to it is going to be make or break. This could be successful or it could be a complete disaster for DJI, but we will see. Unfortunately, Droning On doesn't have one yet, but if you're thinking of buying one, comment below and also, of course, hit subscribe on this channel because as soon as there's any more leak information or photos, it will be posted here. Give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if your face looks like it's crashed into a tree. And once again, hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching.